Do you know what is common between creator of Gmail, founder of Craigslist and award-winning and box office record-breaking directors of four Marvel Cinematic Universe movies? Case Western Reserve University. Not just that, the university is associated with 17 Nobel Prize winners, is ranked top 50 in America by US News & World Report, top 200 globally by QS, 18th in the world for innovation by Nature Index and has students from over 90 countries. Well, I can go on and on, but today let us welcome our guests joining us all the way from the United States to tell you all about the MS in CS program at CASE. We have with us Christopher Littman, Executive Director of Professional Programs and Karen Murphy, Online Program Manager at CASE School of Engineering, answer all your questions. Let us dive straight in. Great. So, hello everyone. So, we have very special people joining us all the way from US, very early in the, early in the morning, 8, 8.30 I believe. Uh, we have Karen and Chris from Case Western Reserve University, and they are going to answer all your questions about MS and CS program at Case School of Engineering. So, welcome, Karen and Chris. Thank you, Saket. Nice to be here with you. Thank you. Great. So, I've already introduced you to uh, the audience. So, let's jump in right into the questions. So, the first question I have for you is, Karen, uh, that is like, can you please tell us briefly about uh, the MS and CS program? At case. Yes. So <clears throat> case is ranked number 45 of the best engineering schools in the USA. Right. In the computer science department, we have 15 faculty members. Currently, there are 27 online students mm -hmm. and 118 residential students. Right, right. And and do you think like this hybrid program, which are you offering with Leap Advantage, is it like any way different than the uh, regular full-time program on campus? No, both programs are exactly the same. The only difference is that Leap Advantage students take the first two courses online um, from your residence and then, then transfer here into Cleveland. Um, right. But you will receive the exact same diploma, um, a full master's in computer science. Right. I think the major concern of most students who are pursuing hybrid programs, especially I think after COVID has been, uh, uh, do they get the, uh, you know, the, the learning? Uh, do you think the kind of online uh, element you have in the program, do you think it kind of hampers the learning in some way or there's no difference as such? No, absolutely not. You've got the same instructors with the same course criteria at the same skill level. Right. Um, in fact, the online learning format in its variation can offer some benefits as well. Right. Cool. Uh, moving on to the next question, uh, Chris, I'll, uh, I have this question for you. And that is, uh, you know, uh, we'll talk about, uh, I think, most of the students who come to U.S. from India, especially in computer sciences, they're looking to either reskill themselves or upskill themselves, maybe, you know, top up their bachelor's degree with a with master's from U.S., which is, you know, one of the, I think, uh, most preferred destinations for Indian students to pursue uh, computer sciences. So, uh how can how can this this program at case especially the hybrid program we're offering it can help them uh, these students to upskill or reskill themselves well th this program is an interesting opportunity to to uh, gain computer science skills which are in huge demand in the US and worldwide right now so mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot of interest from students who are pivoting from other disciplines trying to get right. into computer science and they're using the master's degree as a springboard to get a job in the U.S. in computer science. Right. Um, here at the university, we have numerous resources on campus that help um, international students find employment with firms in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that the demand for tech jobs and for computer science majors is very strong right now. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I just have a, another question here. So. Uh, uh, let's say we have two kind of students. One is like someone who comes without work experience and someone who may come with work experience. So uh, how, how come this program is going to kind of help both of these categories of students, basically? Like someone from uh, maybe, like you said, you know, someone who's pivoting from another field of study. Uh, will they be able to kind of take on the load of this course? Like, will, will they be able to successfully complete it and understand the small concepts or something? Yeah, I mean, the the, the the program's quite rigorous. I'll be perfectly blunt about that. 
Right. Um, it's not an easy program. It's very demanding. But, you know, students are expected to learn programming or have, you know, programming skills when they enter the program. Got so, it. yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity for, for students that are very driven and hardworking. Um, but it's not an easy program. It's quite rigorous. Um, so I think, you know, there's great opportunities for both types of students. Students who are coming in with undergrad degrees in computer science typically have a very great foundation for right. um, approaching the master's level courses. Mm -hmm. And I would say that students coming in with work experience, the biggest thing that they can do to prepare themselves to be successful would be to work on programming and learning programming. And if I had to pick a language in particular, I would suggest Java. Right. Great. Um, just one more question here. So, like, let's say someone who graduates with this, you know, with this degree, what kind of uh, roles they can target after graduation, and what kind of average salaries they can expect? Yeah. So, computer and information technology occupations in the U.S. earned a median annual wage of greater than ninety-seven thousand dollars annually. Right. Um, to compare that to <coughs> The general population in the U.S., which is about $46,000 annually. So Got you're it. getting a big boost over the median annual wage here. Um, mm -hmm. And another thing to consider, too, is that master's degrees graduates tend to earn more than those with a bachelor's degree in computer science. Okay. So. Yeah, and I would, I would add that. You know, we don't have the exact data on our graduates uh, as far as what they're earning. But based on my um, experience and what I'm hearing, um, I think that our computer science, our master's uh, students in the computer science program are typically earning more than that when they come out of the program. Right. Um, we are a top ranked university so that I think our students are getting some of the higher paid positions. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing starting salaries, you know, as high as $150,000 and higher. Okay. Um, so, and, and students are going to the top ranked firms like Google, Amazon, um, Facebook, you know, all of the marquee fintech right. firms. Got it. Cool. Uh, uh, Carolyn, I have this next question for you, and that's about the application process. So uh, can you briefly take me through the eligibility criteria, uh, any prerequisite courses, or what, what exactly you're looking for? Uh, in an ideal uh, profile? Sure. Yeah. We need um, an undergraduate degree, a four-year engineering or STEM background degree of some kind from an accredited academic institution. Mm -hmm. We need three letters of recommendation. Right. We need a set of official transcripts. We'll want to see their resume because we consider your work experience and how you present yourself. Um, there is the, the GRE is waived for the LEAP Advantage program, so okay. it's fairly unique and no GRE requirement. Right. And as far as the prerequisite courses go, it's calculus one, two, and three, differential equations, some programming skills demonstrated in some way. Right. Um, as well as finally intro to data structures, discrete okay. mathematics, and algorithms. Right, and, and do you do? And you, that's do you, it. <laughs> okay, uh, you know, a uh, very uh, interesting question I have is like, you know, because I've been taking a lot of sessions lately with uh, students one on one, and uh, computer science is like so popular right now. And you know, I have students from let's say marketing, and you know, I had students from psychology wanting to go into computer sciences. So are you open to like people from other backgrounds as well, given that they have some sort of statistical or quantitative ability? Like, are you open to uh, people from varied degrees as well? Like, let's say marketing or business or. Typically not marketing and business. Um, I would I would say we're open to STEM degrees Got it. and we're typically looking for students who have demonstrated some, you know, experience, perhaps in the professional setting. Um, doing programming uh, would be the main thing that we're looking for. But uh, we've dabbled in some of the other like social sciences, kind of stuck mm -hmm. our toes in the water. And unfortunately, those students don't typically perform very well in the program. As I said, it's quite rigorous. Yeah. This is computer science. It's a technical domain. 
that if you don't have the proper background, it's very difficult to be successful. Right. It becomes difficult for the student as well in the future. Very difficult. Yeah, it's a frustrating experience for the student. Right. Uh, one more question here. So, uh, like you said, you want a four-year degree. So, I believe, I think, because US and India, they have a very different education system. So, we have a couple of degrees in India, especially the Bachelor of Sciences degree, which is like usually a three-year degree in India. So, do you accept students with a three-year degree as well, or uh, they have to have a four-year degree? Uh, we we do ex we'll look at students with three year degrees, um, you know, under special circumstances. We use the West evaluation, so um, no, whatever West you know says is a appropriate school, then we consider it. But I know for a fact that some three year degrees from schools in India are considered acceptable. Got it. Cool. Uh, next question I have is, uh, you know, like how uh, leap advantage can help. Uh, uh, with the application process. So like, you know, uh, mostly talking about, I think we've spoken about eligibility requirements and we've spoken about that GRE is not required or maybe, uh, you know, uh, it's a hybrid program. So I would want to know that uh, what kind of, uh, uh, you know, scholarships are available or what kind of work opportunities are available for students uh, once they kind of, uh, you know, like land in US or maybe they want to work or yeah, so we are offering scholarships for this program. Um, our partners at LEAP are managing most of that. So you might need to, you know, speak to them to get some of the details on it. Right. Um, so I think the scholarships are really being um, offered up front, you know, before students actually enter the program. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think I would defer on those details to our partners at LEAP. Got it. Got it. And uh, like, uh, how does the university uh, help in, let's say, uh, let's say once someone graduates and, you know, what kind of career support uh, a student gets? Yeah, we, we, we've got a very fine Office of International Affairs here. Um, you know, I should give you a little more background, too. I don't know if we're going to come to these questions or not again, but um, Case Western Reserve has 12,000 students. Um, so we're a larger university, but we're on the smaller side of large. Mm -hmm. um, and I would describe our culture as very family-like. So when you come to Case right. Western Reserve, it's as if you've joined a family. Mm -hmm. um, besides that, we're a tier one research institute. Um, so that is a special distinction. It means that we do a lot of federally funded research on campus to the tune right. of $400 million per year. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, with that being said, um, there's numerous opportunities on campus. What was your original question? I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. For a second. So my original question was, uh, what kind of career support uh, you guys give to the school? Oh, right, right, right. Um, so Case Western Reserve University, there's 12,000 students on campus. The majority of the students are actually graduate students, and the majority of the students are also um, international. So we have a very um, heavily weighted population of international students. And to service those students, we have a robust um, Office of International Affairs that helps with visas, um, OPT, CPT. They can help with the I-20 process. Right. So we're very, we're very well prepared for that process. Got it. Cool. So I'll just uh, quickly very, uh, you know, wind up this very quick session. Uh, Chris and Karen, do you have any, uh, you know, essential tips and tricks or maybe some uh, great advice you would like to give uh, to all the people who are watching this video today? Well, my biggest tip would be that if you're not um, comfortable or familiar with cold weather, bring a nice long down jacket with you. We get a bit of winter here, although we've had a pretty mild winter this year. Um, right. I know that our Dean Raghu Balakrishnan also came from India for the first time when he moved to the U.S., and he had never seen snow before. So it can be quite shocking for some people. And you'll definitely need a winter jacket if you're coming to Case Western Reserve. Although, as you can see by my background, we also have beautiful summers and we enjoy uh, Lake Erie, which is one of the five great lakes. So be prepared to do some boating or some water sports as well. Right. And Karen? Um, so my tip would be that this is a challenging program and we're looking for people who have um, worked hard in the past. And okay. the fact that um, you're able to demonstrate meeting our criteria, 
you're then going to be exposed to an excellent opportunity. This program is a chance to work with some inspiring um, instructors here, as well as get exposed to a great community. Uh, I really can't emphasize what a wonderful place Case Western is. So best of luck. We look forward to hearing from you. Admissions to this World Rank program is now open and you can save up to 24 lakhs as well. Slots are limited, so go book a free session with our experts now. The link is in the description box below.